Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming on out here this afternoon. Appreciate you being here. I would like to start off uh, this afternoon's program with a very important announcement. I am well aware that the Celtics tip off at 3.30. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Because of uh, COVID restrictions, we were unable to formally recognize in person the class of 2020. So we thought it would be appropriate to introduce them here this afternoon. First, Nashua Athletics contributor, Al Savage. Next is Nashua senior high school coach, Bob DeMello, represented by his wife, Kathy DeMello. Next is Nashua senior high school student athlete, Mark Russell, represented by his son, Mark. Next is Nashua Senior High School student athlete, Kole Ayi. Next is Nashua Senior High School student athlete represented by her mom, Donna, is Laura Garrity Ekstrand. Next is Nashua High School North student athlete, John Schroeder. And next we have Nashua High School South student athlete, Trevor Knight. Unable to join us today from the class of 2020, we have Nashua Athletics contributor Farley Gates, Nashua Senior High School student athlete Amy Rustin, Nashua High School North student athlete Kendall Reyes, and Nashua High School North student athlete Brad Zapenis. Congratulations to the Nashua Athletics Hall of Fame class of 2020. And once again, because of COVID restrictions, we were unable to do this in person, so as a result, we ended up doing it online and the interviews are online and these folks kind enough to join us here today. And if you get a chance to listen to and read about their accomplishments, uh, it is quite impressive. Ladies and gentlemen, the class of 2020, National Athletics Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, now we are going to meet the inductees for the National Athletics Hall of Fame class of 2023. First, we have Nashua Athletics contributor, Mr. Ed Leishis. Next, we have longtime Nashua coach, Art Cobbs. Next, we have class of 1963, Nashua senior high school student athlete, Jim Tebbets. Next is class of 1984, Nashua senior high school student athlete, Robin Proctor Salent. Next, we have class of 1993, Nashua Senior High School student athlete, Phil Greenwood. Next is class of 1995, Nashua Senior High School student athlete, Michelle Mickey Cernuda. A lot of talent here in Nashua. Next up, we have the class of 1998, Nashua Senior High School student athlete, Femi Ie. <laughs> Next up, from the class of 2003, Nashua Senior High School student athlete, Matt Baluk. <laughs> Next up, from the class of 2009, Nashua High School South student athlete, Mike Grilakis. And last, but certainly not least, let's meet the members of the 1987 girls basketball team. The head coach, John Fugula, is represented by his sister, Karen Wickman. <laughs> Assistant coach, Sarah Rolfe. <laughs> Melissa Ayotte. Celeste Lavoy Blankenship. <laughs> Michelle Grenier Coombs. Joy Barry Donovan. Stephanie Bird Kane, <laughs> Becky Shrigley Nagy, <laughs> Michelle Labups Ballet, <laughs> Maurice Wobble. <laughs> Not in attendance here tonight, Lori Largy Nielsen, 
Shell Jane Stewart. How about a nice round of applause for our 2023 National Athletics Hall of Fame inductees? <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the 2023 National Athletics Hall of Fame induction ceremony. My name is Jason Roby, and I will be the master of ceremonies for this glorious six-hour induction. <laughs> Just kidding. Hardy's table. Where's Hardy? It's his boys are looking over at the food. I don't think we had enough for six hours, coach. But today truly is an exciting day to look out and see over 260 people. 260 people in attendance speaks volumes as to the support each inductee from the last two classes has from friends and family and loved ones. You know, back in 2008, a group of Nashua North coaches got together and discussed bringing back the Hall of Fame, which had been uh, defunct since, since 2000. And due to the complexities of two new high schools blending in with the school they split from, it never really got off the ground. And it remained a discussion until it faded into the background. Well, fast forward to 2018, when Nashua Athletic Director Lisa Jingris brought the idea to resurrect and also recreate a new Nashua Athletics Hall of Fame set with bylaws, objectives, and timelines. She formed a committee comprised of highly respected former athletes, coaches, sports writers, and contributors, and even brought back former members of the last Hall of Fame committee. Although I know that she would not want the credit, Lisa Jingris is the main reason that we are here today to once again celebrate, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Lisa's the main reason we are here today and once again, have the ability to celebrate and recognize greatness here in this city. Would you please welcome to the podium Athletic Director of the Nashua School District and the Co-Head Chair of Nashua Athletics, Hall of Fame Board of Directors, Lisa Jengris. So thank you very much, Jason, for that very nice introduction. On behalf of the Hall of Fame Committee, I would like to welcome all of you to the 12th induction of the Nashua Athletics Hall of Fame. As Jason mentioned, this is the first Hall of Fame, in-person Hall of Fame induction in 22 years, and we are excited that all of you have joined us today and filled this ballroom. I'm not sure we could fit anybody else in here. We thank you all for coming to celebrate our inductees. This incredible turnout shows the impact that the individuals being inducted today have had on you as well as on so many others. The number of people that wanted to be at this induction to honor the 11 individuals from 2020 and the nine individuals and our team being inducted today signifies the importance of education-based athletics and how much of an integral part of our national public schools it is. Before we honor today's inductees, I would like to take a moment to thank the members of the Hall of Fame Committee who have been on this journey from the beginning and will continue to work tirelessly to support Nashua student athletes and coaches in the future. Thank you for your hard work and support through the resurrection of this Hall of Fame. If you could each stand when called and remain standing until all members have been announced. Unfortunately, two of our committee members are not able to be here today, but I do want to recognize Ashley Payette and Nate Burns as member of our committee. <laughs> Keith Richard, Dante Lorendi, Nate Maserol, Renee Archer, Scott Knight, Kiki McIntyre, our committee, Sarah, committee secretary and master of ceremonies, Jason Roby, a member of the Hall of Fame himself, Bill Stump, Tom King, another member of our Hall of Fame himself, and I want to apologize as the first induction in 22 and a half years, there are some mistakes. Um, so unfortunately, this gentleman's name was not on the Hall of Fame committee in the program, and I do apologize for that. George Sevens. <laughs> Assistant Chair and one of our inductees today, Ed Leishis. 
And last, but certainly not least, the person most responsible for pulling this reception and banquet together, Karen Burnett. Karen, a special thank you goes to you for being so thorough and meticulous while handling so many of the details surrounding the organization of today's induction. Thank you to all of the members of the Hall of Fame Committee. I want to take a moment to introduce a few special guests and thank them for joining us today. The Mayor of the City of Nashua, Mr. James Donches. And Nashua School District Superintendent, Dr. Mario Andrade. Your presence here today and your support of education-based athletics in the City of Nashua shows your understanding of the core values that are taught through teamwork and competition. So we thank you. The purpose of the Hall of Fame is to recognize and honor those Nashua High School athletes, coaches, teams, administrators, and special contributors who have made ex exceptional contributions in their respective sports, coaching, or support roles. They have helped to bring honor, recognition, distinction, and excellence to the Nashua Athletics. Their conduct in and out of athletic competition has earned them the right to be a member of this Hall of Fame. The individuals honored have continued to demonstrate the values and skills imparted by high school interscholastic athletics long after their high school graduation. We just met the inductees from the class of 2020. We are so grateful that so many of you could join us and I would like to introduce you and have you stand one more time. We are glad you were here to get some of the recognition you deserved. Again, Bob DeMello being represented by his wife, Kathy. Mark Russell being represented by his son, Mark. Mr. Al Savage, the legend in Nashua. Kolea Yee. Laura Garrity is being represented by her mother, Donna. John Schroeder. And Trevor Knight. The video of that virtual induction is still available via YouTube. There is a QR code in your programs that will bring you directly to that link. Congratulations again, Nashua Athletics Hall of Fame Class of 2020. Once again, I thank you all for joining us today. Congratulations to this year's inductees, and we hope you enjoy your afternoon. At this time, it is my honor and privilege to introduce a man who needs no introduction to so many of you in this room, the Assistant Chair of the National Athletics Hall of Fame Committee and one of today's inductees, Mr. Ed Leishis. Thank you, Lisa. Groves, great job. Thanks for taking my speech. You got this now? I got right, the history, you know? He pretty much covered what I was going to say when he, in his introduction remarks, but I want to go into it a little deeper. In the beginning, the Boosters Club, alumni, friends of Nashville High, they are the ones that got it started back in 91. And it went well to 2000. And then without Harrington's retirement, the advent of two new public high schools, things just kind of fell through the cracks. And while Al's replacements were great people, they didn't have the investment in the city of Nashville. I said from the day that Al announced his retirement and they hired his first replacement, unless it's someone from Nashua, it's not happening. They were good, but they're not invested. And Jason, you hit it right on the head. Lisa was the right choice at the right time. And I can tell you, when George Tebbets and I met with her in the summer of uh, 18 and talked about it, and we walked in, we figured, oh, we're going to start from scratch. And here we, she had done her homework. She had researched other high school athletic hall of fame around the country. She had a vision then. She had an idea then. She talked to us. She went back and talked to the judge, Joe Plant, who was part of the original group. And then we got together in November for the first of many meetings. We had bylaws. We had criteria. You had to be nominated. And it had to be balanced. Well, by golly, it was, it is. And it is all because of her. So I speak for the past, the present, and the future 
Lisa, you were right on. They sell out confirms that. Thank you very much. Right about now, uh, Lisa Jingris is very nervous. Um, she realized that she gave me a microphone and a three hour window in which to uh, speak. But in all, in all seriousness, um, when this job came about, she said, now remember, this is an induction, not a convection. And uh, she said, the job calls for well-mannered, well-spoken, with the mastery of the English language. But Coach Maserol turned it down. <laughs> so I missed that meeting and was uh, voted in as uh, today's MC. So I guess the days of good grammar has went. <laughs> At any rate, our first inductee is Nashua Athletics contributor Ed Leishus. If you haven't heard of Ed, you've probably been living under a rock. Uh, Ed is everywhere. He's everywhere, Ed. He would have probably hosted here tonight, but he probably had to cut the ribbon for some fish hatchery or throw out the pitch for a team that's not even here in Nashua yet. I don't know. But uh, he's served many roles for Nashua Athletics. He's started as a player. He moved to broadcasting. He officiated football and basketball games. He appealed to city officials to help with the athletic budgets and even chaperoned for the NHS cheer team at Lake George for a competition. Ed began his broadcasting while he was still in high school, working with his father, Nashua legend Ed Sr., starting in 1968. He broadcasted for WSMN and later WMVU. He covered football, basketball, hockey, state wrestling tournaments, baseball, and softball. In addition, as a member of the Nashua Lions Club, he became chair of the annual boys' basketball dinner and continued that recognition for North, South, and for Bishop Girton, expanding it to the girls' team starting in 2023. Each year, Ed presents Unsung Hero Awards to each program. Ed strongly supported the athletic budgets via the radio stations and provided support for the state decathlon held at Nashua South. Over the years while broadcasting at SMN, Ed led the support for the NHS cheer team when they won a chance to compete in Lansing, Michigan for the national competition. Ed has worked hand in hand with all Nashua athletic directors from Buzz Harvey to current AD Lisa Jingris. That is quite a span of time and he's always looking for ways to help Nashua's programs. He's a member of both the NHIAA Hall of Fame and the Holman Stadium Sports Legends Hall of Fame. He's been awarded the City of Nashua Service to Youth Award, the Larry Elliott Sportsman Award, and the 2021 Nashua Chamber of Commerce Citizen of the Year Award. Let's take a closer look at the Ion Education host, Mr. Ed Leishus. Well, actually, it began while I was still in school. Uh, I, I was playing football and then uh, became injured. So uh, I started my career path uh, while still in high school, and that was broadcasting high school football games uh, alongside of my father. And uh, it carried forward, and uh, for over 50 years, I've had a relationship of doing high school sports, uh, specifically Nashua, the Nashua North and Bishop Girton uh, here in the city. And uh, I I'm quite humbled and honored to have been selected for the Hall of Fame and uh, will be uh, in the Hall of Fame now with my dad who was inducted in the second class uh, when it first started. Uh, I got to work with him for about uh, 10 years before he passed away. Uh, and, and he's the one that instilled in me that if, if you're going to get and expect things to come to you from the community, you gotta be willing to give back to it. But the most memorable of all the, of all the games I've done uh, was the first Nashua Bishop Girton football game, which ended in a 12-12 tie. And the way they arranged it would be, it would end in a tie. There would be no uh, overtime or anything. And uh, there were over 8,000 people at Holman Stadium that, that Thanksgiving morning. And I think that set the tone for the Nashville Girton football games, then the Nashville Girton basketball games and baseball games and hockey games going forward. But that, that, that first game between the two 
uh, uh, Nashua and Bishop Gurton. And then probably yeah, next would be uh, the beginning of the Nashua North, Nashua South competitions. Uh, not only during the regular season when they met, but when they had the Turkey Bowl and they would play again. Uh, it, was, uh, it was just as exciting uh, to be able to do those games uh, in, in anticipation of uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, like I said, I, I, I started out with my dad. And an interesting story, uh, because we're both named Ed, uh, so as not to confuse people, I had a stage name when I worked with him, and it was Lee Edwards. I just kind of flip-flopped our two names. Uh, but obviously him, and then uh, after he passed away, I was very fortunate to have some uh, good uh, color people to uh, assist me in the games. Uh, the late Dave Bellavance, uh, another Hall of Fame member, the late John Fagula. Before he went into coaching girls basketball, John was my partner to do uh, high school basketball games. Uh, people like uh, Dale Lonroth uh, from the radio station, Frank Tease again. Uh, I kind of succeeded Frank as the voice of Nashua High School basketball. So all those people, but uh, more importantly, uh, my family, uh, they understood that Fridays and Saturdays in the fall was football, uh, Tuesdays and Fridays and basketball season, and when we started doing hockey, that was an occasional Wednesday or Saturday, and so uh, without their understanding and support, I don't think I would have been as successful uh, as I was. Always be a good sport about things. Uh, everything happens for a reason. I'm a strong believer in that. And uh, just be proud of your school. And, and coaching today has changed too. Uh, and I think uh, the time and effort that the men and women who are coaching uh, in the high school ranks, uh, they're, they're making a big commitment to today's youth. And I would hope that uh, the student athletes would uh, respect uh, what's being done for them and play hard, play fair and uh, make a name for yourself that way. Ladies and gentlemen, 2023 Nashua Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Ed Leishas. Congratulations, Ed. That actually reminds me of a conversation I had with the mayor when he, uh, when he walked in here today. He, he looked confused when he saw the guest list, and I said, Mr. Mayor, I said, what, what seems to be the problem? And he said, well, Ed and I usually tag team these things, and we split them up, so the fact that he's here today and I'm here today doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but, but, uh, but Ed, congratulations, well-deserved, great stuff. Our next inductee is a uh, longtime Nashua coach, Art Cobbs. <laughs> Coach Cobb's career in education started in 1978 for parts of six decades and over 110 consecutive seasons. Think about that number, 110 consecutive seasons. He has coached at Fairgrounds Junior High School, it was the junior high school then, Nashua Senior High School, and when the high school split, Nashua High School North. And you know today is important because he's wearing a shirt with buttons and pants that don't have a drawstring. Important day. Between Nashua Senior High School and Nashua North High School, Arthur Cobbs has been directly involved with over 25 team championship or runner-up banners hanging on the walls between the two high schools. He's been a part of well over 60 individual or relay champions between the two schools, with 42 of those coming since 2004 from Nashua North. One supporter in his nomination bio noted that Art leaves a lasting impression on all of the student athletes that run or compete for him. He has provided underprivileged students with opportunities, food, clothing, and support. He builds a positive team culture and he maintains that culture with coaches in Nashua and beyond. He has mentored many New Hampshire coaches as well as teachers. 
I can assure you that that statement alone means more to Coach Cobbs than any banner hanging on the wall. Art Cobbs is one of the first teachers I ever met in 1996 at Fairgrounds Junior High. And on a personal note to this day, he is one of the most influential mentors I have ever had. Let's take a look at longtime Nashua coach, Art Cobbs. Being inducted into the Hall of Fame is simply an overwhelming experience, something I never expected, but I am eternally grateful for the committee and for uh, everyone involved. But it's, I'm accepting this um, honor um, with the knowledge that it's only me, a little piece of, of, of this belongs to me. Most of it belongs to the kids and the coaches that I've been lucky enough to work with over the last 40 years. My principal was a guy by the name of Jack Daniels, who I'm hoping will be with us tonight um, or this afternoon. And Jack uh, kind of pushed me into coaching um, at the uh, at fairgrounds. It was a wonderful track program at fairgrounds, and and he uh, he said, "Why don't you just go in and and see if this is something you would like." And uh, I kept with it. Um, Jack is a, a, a wonderful individual and probably one of my best friends. And a few years later, um, he allowed me to, to start coaching basketball at fairgrounds. And that ran for about 25 years. Uh, and he's uh, someone who remains really dear to me. So from 79 till the present, I've been coaching uh, track, cross country, and basketball. In, in 2021, we started um, to come out of the pandemic. We hadn't had a, a track for a couple of years because of, the, uh, of COVID. And in 2021, we wanted to get back to some normalcy for both the coaches and the kids. And in spring of that year, we, um, we stumbled upon a, a, a group of kids that were just so willing to do what we wanted to do and so willing to, uh, to go that extra uh, effort. And we won the Division I championship uh, by over 30 points. So it was a total effort. And that really sticks out to me as, as something that uh, was really exciting and um, effort to bring back. Um, what should have been all along. Trust the people that you surround yourself with. Um, find good people to help you because it's a, it's a job that can't be done by one person. And once you find good people, uh, trust in them to, to uh, do the job. Um, I've been so fortunate to have people come back and help. Um, the, the current uh, volunteers and assistants that we've had throughout the years, they're just wonderful people. And the, uh, and the best thing I did was just get out of their way. Um, you know, I'd, I'd be really <laughs> remiss in not thanking uh, my family, especially my wife. We're going to celebrate 50 years of marriage in, in August. And we've been together for well over 55 years, and she's put up with a lot of the nonsense. Um, she's one of the smartest people I know, um, and she's just been a, a steady influence on me. Um, my three boys have put up with a lot of nonsense over the, over the years and have stuck with it. Um, I have five grandchildren that um, are the light of our, uh, our lives, and, and we really, uh, are very fortunate to have them um, to continue to keep us young. Um, all the coaches that I coached with over the past few years, very too many to mention, but they all know that how much I care about them and, and appreciate their efforts. Um, the kids, um, you, go, you don't go into coaching for anything other than um, the kids. Um, and the kids over the years, have been just wonderful, and uh, I've been I've been very fortunate. Um, it's been part of what keeps us all young, and I just uh, want to thank everyone um, that 
I've had the, the pleasure of knowing and the pleasure of uh, working with over the last 40 years. It's been a, a joyful uh, trip and one that uh, uh, I just can't thank anyone enough. Ladies and gentlemen, long time and current Nashua coach, 2023 National Athletics Hall of Famer, Art Cobbs. Congratulations, Coach Cobbs. You know, speaking of clothing, uh, I ran into Jerry Holland. Where's Jerry? Longtime uh, Nashua athletic trainer here in the, uh, in the city. Jerry was very disappointed in my attire here today. Apparently, I'm not supposed to wear dark clothing until after 5, 5 p.m. And I said, Jerry. I go, I'm a teacher. I can afford one suit. What you... Back me up here, Mr. Mayor. What... <laughs> All right, I'm one for one in mayor jokes. Get resume ready for next week. Very good. <laughs> Our next inductee is a class of 1963 Nashua Senior High School student athlete, Jim Tebbets. The last name is synonymous with greatness. Jim Tebbets grew up on Abbott Street, just behind Holman Stadium, and in his youth, he attended every game played there, even if he had to sneak in. Watching all those great players over the years allowed him to envision himself on that field one day. Sure enough, Jim's time would come and his successes would be many. Jim was a football and a baseball standout from 59 to 1963, playing for legendary coaches Buzz Harvey and Tony Mirandas. The Panthers won three state titles during those years, two in football, one in baseball, all during a time when Nashua was competing against the biggest schools, not in New Hampshire, but in Massachusetts. Jim was a co-captain on that football team that featured future NFL quarterback Greg Landry. In 1962, Jim earned several awards, including the New Hampshire Class L All-State Football Team Award, the Telegraph All-Scholastic Award, the Manchester Union Leader Outstanding Lineman Award, the Lowell, Massachusetts All-Opponent Team. He was a member of the New Hampshire Shrine Bowl team that played against Vermont and the Lynn, Massachusetts, Harry Aganis Bowl team. In 2019, it came full circle when Jim became a member of the Legends of Holman Stadium Hall of Fame. Jim will join his uncle George, Bertie Tebbets, and his brother, George Tebbets, in the Nash Athletics Hall of Fame. Let's take a closer look at Hall of Famer Jim Tebbets. I grew up in the back of Holman Stadium. I grew up so close, actually, that my mother would look out the back window, and when she saw the lights go off at home in the stadium, she knew her guy would be home from football practice and put the meal on. I started off uh, when I was eight years old, and I was selected to play for, at that time, it was Sprague Electric. The team was called the Adams. And so for the next 10 years, I played for many different baseball teams and football teams. Back in the 60s, there was no Nashua North, there was no Girton, there was only Nashua. And if I can remember correctly, Nashua at that time, back in the 60s once again, was the second largest high school east of the Mississippi. The only high school larger, which is the largest high school even today, was Brockton. So there was a lot of competition playing out and trying to get on to a sport. So it was a privilege, you know, to play at home and stadium and something that I spent <clears throat> the better part of my first life. At the end of the football season, the team gets together at Nashua High. At that point, we elect captains for the following year. 
and I was elected captain for the 1962 year. I was captain, I was able to pick where the game ball would go, and it would always be a senior, obviously. But there's one game ball that I wanted, and that was the Lowell ball. And I made that noted at the beginning of the year. If we didn't win, I wouldn't get a ball. And Lowell had a good team that year. Uh, we were expected to lose 18 to six, and we won 18 to six. So when I went to get the ball from the referee, he wouldn't give it to me. So I asked him to go ask the coach, who was Ray Riddick at the time. And we walked over to Ray at the end of the game, and he looked at me, he says, he's earned it. When you start playing organized sports at eight years old, you go through many, many coaches. And all of them I, I can remember too. But there's one person in particular that I can, I can point to, and that's Tony Morantis. Tony was not like Buzz. He didn't yell, scream, swear. He didn't have to. He got what he wanted. He got the best out of his players because he cared. And you cared for him. And when you met him in the hallway, he was the type of guy that uh, would ask how you're doing. And he meant it. And we knew that. He taught through his eyes. And you always wanted to see those eyes look with uh, you accomplish something. And that was important to us. So Tony was very important. Uh, what does it mean today to be into the Hall of Fame? It's something that goes way beyond a badge, something I'm very proud of. I just want to thank the committee and Lisa in particular for this honor. I happen to be the third Tebbets to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uncle Bertie, my brother, and myself. <clears throat> Thanks for remembering an old lineman. Ladies and gentlemen, 2023 National Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Jim Tebbets. You know, Jim and I actually have something a little bit in common, opposite ends of the spectrum, but, um, you know, he said that in the early days he used to sneak into Holman Stadium to try and catch all the games, and when I was coaching, I was trying to have all the people stay in the stadium to kind of watch the game, so. All right, that got a lukewarm reception. Very good. All right, very good. An only child. I had to work hard. All right. Our next inductee is a class of 1984 Nashua Senior High School student athlete, Robin Proctor Salent. Robin has been described as a quiet, humble leader both on and off the track during her years at Nashua High School. While a dutiful and dedicated student athlete, she was a main contributor to Coach Pauline Albert's powerhouse program from 1980 through through the 1984 seasons, earning numerous New England and New Hampshire state titles along the way with state and school records. I could read them all to you, but I was told I can't get a time extension on the room, so you'll have to read her bio in the program. In a nutshell, this Purple Panther would set school and state records in the 100-meter hurdles, the 300-meter hurdles, and the long jump. She would contribute to indoor and outdoor New Hampshire team titles, and in 1984, she was the top point scorer in all of New England at the New England Championship meet, cementing a New England team title for Nashua by placing first in the 300-meter hurdles, second in the long jump, and third in the 100-meter hurdles, producing times and distances that athletes to this day still can't touch. To cap things off, Robin was voted NHS Female Athlete of the Year, when defining the standard of what an elite Purple Panther track and field athlete looks like, look no further than the numerous plaques adorning the wall in the athletic wing at Nashua South High School. There you will find the many titles of Robin proctor Salent. Upon graduating from Nashua High School, Robin took her talents to the next level at UVM. Let's take a look at Purple Panther track and field legend, Robin proctor Salent. Well, first of all, I want to say that I'm very honored to be uh, inducted as an athlete. 
my time at Nashville High, um, both as a student and as an athlete, was really an important time in my life. Now, I do have to say I have not been involved with Nashville athletics after I left um, to go to college. My parents moved when I, the summer I graduated. And so I never went back to Nashua except for a few visits. And, but however, my experiences led me to um, be a part of my kids' community and where I teach, the community that I teach in. And I have been a cross country and track coach uh, on and off for the past 14 years. And I'm currently coaching track um, right now. We're in season. I started in ninth grade and um, I was also a basketball player and I played basketball in the winter through 10th grade through my sophomore year. But then after sophomore year, I decided to dedicate um, more to track and field. So I did winter track and spring track um, my junior and senior career, uh, you know, time there. And um, it led to me um pursuing track in college. Okay. I was a jumper. So that included both long jump and triple jump. I was a hurdler, both short and long. I was a sprinter. So I mainly concentrated on the four by one, the four by two and the four by four. And coach Albert had her bullhorn. And, and to this day, I can hear her <laughs> and that bullhorn. Come on, ladies run. But the best thing is we worked so hard and I, um, I formed relationships with um, my teammates, but also, and I think the most important thing is we had a lot of fun. So practices, I look forward to practice every single day and my teammates, and I have lasting relationships. Two of my really good friends, um, Kathy McLeod and Kristen Panaggio um, were right there with me the whole way. And we used to just um, have a lot of fun while working hard. Mm -hmm. My dad in particular, uh, we would talk for hours and he would give me a, advice on every aspect of my life, whether it was sports, athletic, college, what I wanted to major in. And so I certainly wouldn't be um, where I am today without the support and love of my parents. Coach Albert, uh, I mean, how amazing was she? Um, she was so influential in my life. I can't even express how much she did for me. She taught me to work hard. She taught me to set goals for myself. Um, she encouraged me. She helped me with all aspects of deciding to go to college and continue sports in my um, after high school. She brought me on my college visits and she was instrumental in, um, you know, helping me all along the way. And I, um, I have so many fond memories of just everything that she did for me and uh, how much uh, of a wonderful and amazing coach she was. I'm a coach now. So um, it's coaching now is a little bit different than the eighties, but the thing that I would tell any athlete is that to work hard and there's a spectrum of athletes there. Um, there are some that just want to be a part of something. They just want to be on the, the team. There are some that will go on and maybe pursue athletics after high school. But I think for all of them, there's some, um, while it might be different, I think work hard, set goals. And um, most importantly, if you can do that while still having fun, um, your teammates, you can form relationships that I think are going to last you um, maybe your whole life or set this foundation for relationships going forward. I think it's really important to know your athletes and every athlete is different. It's just like in teaching. And if you're not a teacher, but one size doesn't fit all. So, and you, you got to know the kid that's out there that wants to maybe be varsity and a D1 athlete to a kid that just wants to be a part of something. And it will be different in how you coach um, those athletes.
A, a few acknowledges. Um, you know, first, I want to say that track was very important to me, at, both in high school and in college. And I'm so thankful um, that I was able to do it. I have to thank my brother Langley. He's the one that sort of forced me <laughs> to go out and track in ninth grade. And um, and uh, of course, I'm thankful for him. And he ran track at Nashua High and in college and even after he did masters and things like that. Um, I'd like to thank my husband and my family. They've been supportive all the way. And um, just all the Nashua athletes out there that um, ran track with me back in the day. And Coach Albert, of course, who is no longer here, but I want to give a shout out to her. You're amazing. And I wouldn't be to where I was without you. Ladies and gentlemen, 2023 Nashua Athletics Hall of Famer, Robin Brocker Select. Congratulations, Robin. You had mentioned uh, Coach Albert quite a bit there in, in, your, uh, in your speech, and I want to let you know that when uh, Coach Albert passed away, somebody had to try and fill those shoes. Any guesses? I did 14 seasons with the Nashua High School girls track and field team, and every time a girl would, uh, would do a, a great performance on the track, I would always call it Proctor Proud because I would look up at the plaques and, and I had to know what the history was of the program. And so anytime a, a student athlete would do something terrific, I'd say, she just made a Proctor proud. And so congratulations, Robin. Our next inductee is class of 1993 Nashua Senior High School student athlete, Phil Greenwood. Phil was not only one of the best distance runners in Nashua athletics history, but was also a New Hampshire and regional champion as well. Phil ran for Nashua Athletics Hall of Fame coaches Art Cobbs and Bob DeMello. In 1992, Phil was regarded as one of the top distance runners in the entire country. He still has some of the fastest times ever run on the challenging courses at Derry Field in Manchester, and many of his races with the region's elite are legendary. Teammate and now current National North Principal Nate Burns tells a story about how Phil one time got lost on a course during a race. They always do these walkthroughs at the beginning of the races and sometimes you don't always pay attention to where the course goes and that's fine if you're not leading the race. But Phil was out front and unfortunately he had to uh, retrace his steps and he was still able to catch up and win that particular race after retracing his steps. <laughs> Phil's uh, race tactics changed from race to race depending on how he felt, making it very hard to scout him. He would capture the cross country Class L individual titles in 1990, 1991, and 1992. He won the New Hampshire individual state title regardless of class or division in 1991 and 92, and he guarded New England champion honors in 1992. He's also the former course and state record holder at Derryfield Park in an amazing time of 50, 15 minutes and 40 seconds. In indoor track, Phil is the current record holder at National High School South in the 1500 as well as the 3000 meters with a time of 850. He was the 3200 New England champion in 92 and ranked 10th in the nation at 937. His name and times are all over the cross-country archives of LancerTiming.com. Go check them out. Let's take a look at Hall of Fame inductee, Phil Greenwood. My name is Philip Greenwood. Um, I ran track, uh, cross-country track, and winter track, spring, and um, from 89 to 93. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, this is, this is great. I mean, uh, I mean, one of the pinnacles, I guess, of my career, obviously, it was, I mean, I was uh, one of the top five on WMUR. They rated the top five cross-country people, and I was, I think I was fourth, which, I mean, great, right? I mean, being inducted into the Hall of Fame must be great. I didn't even know they had a Hall of Fame. I'm like, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. I mean, winning New England's, I did it in cross-country and in spring track for the two-mile. But I guess uh, breaking the record, um, 
at Derry Field Park, I mean, me and my coach were, I mean, it was a huge picture in the paper of us hugging, and that was, that was pretty memorable for me, for sure. But my coach, Artie Cobbs, he's being inducted too at the same time, which is really awesome for me to be inducted into the Hall of Fame with him because we meant so much to each other. Um, so it's, that's really cool. I mean, I just got a text message from an old um, cross-country guy that I ran against in um, first, uh, Concord. His name was Chris Byers. You know, we still keep in touch. I mean, it's, it's great stuff like that, you know? You keep in touch with these people, even though they were your competitors. You still have, like, a friendship, and that's that was always awesome. Um, I got so many people to tell. I mean, Ann Sipka, I mean... Todd, Lionel, uh, Nate Burns, Artie. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on. It's it's just crazy. Like, Chris Byers, everybody has pushed me to be the person I am today. I mean, it's, it's, it's cool. It's great. Good, been a good ride. Ladies and gentlemen, 2023 National Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Phil Greenwood. Congratulations, Phil. A lot of people don't know this, but Phil actually came back and volunteered his time to coach with Arthur Cobbs a couple of seasons there. And, and uh, under his tutelage, uh, Artie's kids had some of the best times they've had uh, in a four-year career. So, Phil, thank you so much for dedicating your time to give back. Our next inductee is class of 1995 senior high school student athlete, Michelle Mickey Cernuda. Mickey was a three-sport standout. She played soccer, softball, and basketball, and most are familiar with her basketball accomplishments, but she was also a first-team all-area and all-state catcher in softball for four straight years. She was also a two-year starter for the girls' varsity soccer team. While Cernuda collected many accolades on the court and the playing field, she also excelled in the classroom, graduating with high honors as part of the National Honor Society and the Spanish National Honor Society. The combination of her strong academic and athletic skills earned her several Division I scholarship offers for both basketball and softball. Mickey was described as a loyal, fiercely competitive player who was also unselfish. A true point guard on the basketball court, she cared more about assists than scoring points to the degree that Coach Fagula would have to oftentimes scream at her, shoot the ball! True story. By the time of her graduation, Mickey held the all-time assist record at Nashua High School. During her four years as point guard, the Panthers took home the three state championships and one runner-up plaque. Mickey won New Hampshire Gatorade Player of the Year. She was selected to play in the North American Basketball All-American Game in Wisconsin. And she was named All-State and All-Star by the Boston Globe and the Lowell Sun. And oh, by the way, she was New Hampshire Co-Player of the Year. Mickey also played in the Alhambra New Hampshire versus Vermont All-Star Game and was named a top 50 player in the country by the WBCA. Mickey decided to accept her full scholarship offer to attend the University of New Hampshire, where she helped lead the Wildcats to a second place finish in the America East Conference. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet Hall of Famer Mickey Cernuda. When I found out that I was getting inducted to the Hall of Fame, I was shocked. I was, it was a little surreal, to be honest with you. Um, I played basketball for four years, um, and I played softball for four years. I played soccer for a couple years, um, and I did it just because I loved it. You know, it wasn't, um, it was just part of who I was. Uh, so when I found out, it was pretty amazing. Um, for and, and then I found out that the 1987 team was being inducted, and truly, they were the ones that drove me um, to where I was. Um, as as an athlete they were when I was a child you know I did my homework I was able it was a good girl and on Friday nights we were able to go to the basketball team and that was the 87 team so I feel so honored 
um, that I'm being inducted at the same time they are because they really drove, um, you know, they were the pathway to women's basketball at that time. You know, we won three out of four championships for the women's basketball team. We made it to the finals uh, almost every year for softball. But truly, I would say the memories came from we, you know, we went out to Howard Johnson's. You probably don't know this. This is so long ago, but that was our staple place. After every game, we'd go to Howard Johnson's. Um, the families, you know, the fans, um, the spaghetti dinners. It was really the camaraderie um, and what Coach Fagula had built around our program. Um, that, those are the biggest memories. All those little and they were big now when you look at it you know those times that you spent with your teammates and um, coaches and the fans um, as far as a basketball true memory maybe it was um, maybe my sophomore year they um, we, had, we were dominant as a freshman but we didn't play that much um, we had a role um, as like the fifth T uh, sorry the fifth player um, but as sophomores, we were very young um, and we went up against a really talented Londonderry team and no one thought that we could do it because we were always so um, junior and senior dominant. So that might be my favorite of all time championship because no one thought that we could do it. But all the memories are all my teammates and just all those great spaghetti dinners. Um, and another thing about Nashua too, is that it was more of a um, like a tradition like everybody was involved like our bus driver came to all the games we had a manager um, Cedric that took stats for us and it was all our teachers from my elementary school teachers junior high teachers to even high school it was like more of a culture and a family that involved more than just your actual team the most influential people for me would definitely be my family, um, from my parents to my sisters, my brother-in-law. Um, they just really supported me and everything. Probably my most, my biggest fan was my grandfather. Um, he just went to everything. He was my biggest cheerleader. Um, but again, it's the, you know, my church family and my teachers and my coaches. Coach Fagula was amazing. He, I mean, he was always there for you in many ways, um, but again, it took a village, and and that's what really brought me to where I am. And all the you know the '87 team, you know, and all the former um, basketball players, and even the younger players, you know, they came to watch you, and they really drove that you know you wanted to perform for them and uh, you know be a good influence for them. So again, it was like this this awesome purple pride culture that we had built, and they all really had an impact on where I am today. I would say play with your heart. Um, to really rely on not just your personal self and your instincts, but really to um, rely on your teammates and all that are supporting you. You know, you might have that one person, maybe you have a village helping you as well as I did, um, but really to know that there's someone always there for you and that can help you and are right by your side. And as I tell my three boys all the time, if you're not having fun, then you need to find something else to do and just really, um, to really play hard, do your best and really have fun and giggle while you're doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, 2023, Nashua Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Michelle Mickey Cernuda. Congratulations, Mickey. You know, nothing says state champion like Howard Johnson's, am I right? I happened to see uh, one of uh, Mickey's games when she was a senior. It was one of the first times I ever came to Nashua, and I watched this machine running up and down the floor and beating teams with the press, and it was unbelievable. And that was my indoctrination into the Nashua culture was watching your teams go back and forth and just playing with, a, with your hair on fire, as I like to call it. It was absolutely amazing. Congratulations. Uh, our next... Inductee here is a class of 1998 senior high school student athlete, Femi IE.
Femi played football, he wrestled, he played lacrosse, and I actually we reached out to him a, a few weeks ago, and we got to talking about sports that he had played while at Nashua High, and I asked if he had ever done track and field. And I'm putting a voice in my mind as he's texting back to me, and he, he told me a story about a conversation slash disagreement he may have had with his brother Colet uh, about how Colet tried to recruit him to join the track team which Femi replied, nope. I only need to run two feet before I hit something. <laughs> if I had to run further than that, I was doing something wrong. <laughs> well said, Femi. Yeah, absolutely. And he was right. Uh, according to head coach Bill Hardy, Femi was pure football. He was bright. He was funny. And he was fun to have on your team. Many uh, members of that 97 team are... Uh, here today in attendance, it's great to see all you guys. He treated his teammates like brothers, and we all loved him. He had a switch, though, that once it was turned on, opposing teams stood no chance. Femi was the most dominant football player in the state during his high school career. He was the only player to start on both sides of the ball during that championship season. We used to two platoon, 11 different starters on offense, 11 different starters on defense. We had that kind of talent. Femi was the only young man to play both ways. Very, very impressive. He was a captain. He was an inspirational leader on the 97 title team, and he was a first-team All-State three years in a row, and he was uh, the Gatorade Player of the Year his senior season. Now, this is an award typically given to a player who throws or carries or catches the ball, uh, which tells you just how dominant Femi I.E. was. He spent most of his time in the other team's backfield disrupting and creating chaos. Defensively, he led the team in tackles for loss and sacks and tied for the team lead offensively in pancake blocks. True. The championship winning touchdown in 97 was scored running behind Femi's block. Upon graduation from Nashua High School, he took his talents to Delaware, becoming an all-conference defensive end. Let's meet. New Hampshire Hall of Fame, Nashua High Hall of Fame inductee, Femi Ayi. There are people that remember um, playing. There are people that remember uh, uh, my brother and myself and, uh, and that it added value to the community. Uh, I hope to be a larger part of the football team going forward. I hope to be a larger part of Nashua High School South Athletics. It's so weird to say Nashua High School South. I'm so old that uh, back when I had hair, it was just Nashua High School. I'm still working on this. <laughs> I played with uh, with Coach Hardy uh, back when you could still kind of uh, beat and abuse the kids a little bit more than you can these days. <laughs> we went through some fun stuff. Um, and I tell you, I learned how to be part of a team. We were uh, playing in the state championship game against Londonderry, and it was snowing and terrible and this disgusting mud bowl of a game. And uh, uh, I was noted for being a defensive player. I was pr particularly good back in the day. And uh, we happened to be in a fourth and goal situation on offense and Coach Hardy came into the huddle and he's talking about running counter crisscross or some pitch sweep to get to the end of uh, to get into the end zone when we were, you know, fourth and goal from this far out at two minutes to go in the game or something like that. And it was a zero zero game. It was just disgusting weather. And I, I got so mad. I literally like I like I pushed Coach Hardy out. I grab Aaron Gorekis by the face mask and I say, you're following me. Um, Mike Gallagher's our center. We just I don't even know what the hell the play call was. Coach Hardy was like, yeah, OK. He snaps the ball. I picked the kid up and just buried him just absolutely just the me and Gallagher hit him and the, he went flying Gorekis goes right past me we go into the mud and I come up doing this platoon thing which is the photograph that's everywhere um well, everywhere back in 98 or 25 years ago got him old anyway <laughs> so uh that was really one of the fun things it was that you know it was, it was almost like a tv show where you're like you, you the star player tells the coach to get out of the huddle and I'm taking this on the back and it was the funniest thing that was great. Um, the other one that is an indelible moment for me is really related to practice. We were in uh, we were in two days uh, before our uh, state championship season in '97, and Hardy's given us the business, and he was all about us being part of a team um, in a tremendous aspect. And he was saying 
you've got to be able to carry the people with you. He's like, you got to, you got to count on them. You got to, you got to. And he says, that's it. Carry them. Everybody carry somebody, pick up a person next to you. You're running. And we're literally piggybacking running. And, um, the head coach in Nashua North right now, Chad Zabolas, his nickname in high school was Buddha. He was a rather big fella. Uh, and when when coach hardy says you got to carry somebody i just like i just drop my arms and crow buddha as loud as i possibly can because i know there's nobody else on the team that's going to be able to carry him he was a big dude back in the day so uh i grabbed chad uh threw him on my back and we ran sprints (laughs) and that was a fun thing it's it's indelible because it described leadership to me at a very young age where you understand what you're doing is for a team not only are you doing the item to achieve the goal I'm doing it to help the other person out. It's not fair to the next person to have to carry me or carry Buddha or carry one of the other big guys that's on there. If you're going to be a leader, you need to be the first one out the door. You need to be the first guy off the bus. You need to make sure that the people on your team understand that there's nothing you're not willing to do without them. Learn to be part of a team. Learn to be part of a team in the classroom. Learn to be part of a team on the field. Learn to be part of a team when you're outside, when you're hanging out with your friends. Learn it, learn it, learn it. It's a skill that will add value to every single situation you can possibly be. Uh, you can possibly be in. It just it doesn't make a difference whether you're at work, whether you're at home, whether you're with your family what you do in your recreational activities. If you can be a good team member, you're going to be a good human being. I didn't win a state championship. We won a state championship. I didn't catch a ball. I didn't throw a ball. I didn't run with a ball anywhere. All I did was help. Uh, and I did my part on the team. That was great. So all of you guys that played in the, uh, that played in the 97 team, thank you very much. Thank you for helping bring attention to Nashville High School. I know there were a few college scholarships that got pulled out of this, which was an absolute great thing. I was the first one since 1985. which was pretty cool and I'm hoping to believe that we got some that we got some additional attention going on in this area so my parents all the coaching staff all my little league coaches all the fans that made some funny stuff I mean even my man Tom King that used to just keep me laughing after every game (laughs) Uh, I got a lot of thank you to say to everybody that's out here and uh, to my friends that keep making fun of me right now I did peak in high school Ladies and gentlemen, 2023 National Athletics Hall of Fame inductee, Femi Ie. Uh, no. I don't think so. You think it's true? Okay. Congratulations, Fem. Out of curiosity, anyone here want to recreate that piggyback race? Because Coach Zabolas is over there, and Femi is there. Maybe in the hallway later. Okay. Congratulations, Fem. And, and uh, you mentioned Coach Hardy several times. <laughs> Coach Hardy, by the way, a lot of you may not know this, but... Coach Bill Hardy served a dual purpose here today. Not only did he nominate, not only did he nominate Femi for the Hall of Fame, but he actually uh, tested the structural integrity of each and every one of these tables. So they are safe for you to put stuff down on them. Thank you, Coach. Uh, Just on a side note on Femi, uh, ironically enough, I I mentioned that Femi uh, was not interested in running long distances or joining the track team. If you look at your if you look at your program, ironically, uh, under Femi's name, it has a Robin Proctor Salentz uh, bio on there. So um, that was a, a mistake that the, uh, that the printer made, but I have been assured uh, by Lisa Jingris that um, the, the article will be in full uh, in, the, in the Telegraph and, and uh, on the website. So uh, Femi, congratulations. Sorry about that little snafu, but uh, cheers to you, my friend. Our next inductee is class of 2003 Nashua senior high school student athlete, Matt Valuk. 
According to his head coach, Shane Howard, Matt was not only a great athlete, but also exhibited the qualities emblematic of a champion on and off the track. Coach Howard said Matt Valuk is an outstanding human being. He displayed tremendous leadership, athletic ability, and citizenship throughout his tenure at Nashua High School. He is, quite frankly, the best track athlete I ever coached. And coming from Coach Howard, someone that had, was a, a tremendous eye for talent, that is saying something. Matt captained the indoor and outdoor track teams during his senior year, leading both to state titles. He led both vocally and by example, and he never missed a practice, and he demonstrated outstanding worth ethic to all team members. He also proved to be a model student athlete with his character and sportsmanship, and he was a 12-season student athlete. Matt was the do-everything kid, winning the decathlon his senior year. Perhaps the most impressive thing about that win was his attention to the detail in each of the 10 events over the country's oldest decathlon over the course of two days. Matt was extremely coachable and he worked diligently with each discipline's coach in his practices leading up to that event. Upon graduation, Matt had eight individual state titles, two team titles, a New Hampshire State Decathlon Championship, and he still owns four school records in the 55 meter hurdles, the 110 meter hurdles, the 300 meter hurdles, and he is the all time Nashua High School leader in decathlon points scored. Matt was a four time first team all area athlete and the Nashua Telegraph Track and Field Athlete of the Year as a senior. Upon graduating from Nashua High School, Matt took his talents to Northeastern. Let's take a look at Hall of Fame inductee, Matt Baluk. I ran track and field uh, for almost my whole time at, at uh, National High at the time. Um, I graduated in 2003. I participated in winter and spring track. Um, part yeah, participated in cross country, not really, you know, mostly caused trouble for some of the other uh, coaches and teammates on the team. Coach Howard obviously was there constant through the whole my whole career here at Nashville High. And uh, he was a father figure, stepped in as a father fig figure for me after my dad passed away. And um, there was, it was, it was a tough time in my life. And, and I was on a, I was isolated. I didn't know what was going on. I was coping and, and, and the, all the coaching staff, some of the teammates and my some of my friends showed up to the services, and I I just I, if to me there it hit me that you know it's more than just for sports. They were there, they supported me, and they and they got me through a really tough time, and and um, that was probably the biggest thing that stuck with me. You know, on top of everything else that we did, um, that to me was the biggest thing, and that's that's kept that stayed with me for for my for my whole life. You know, the sports are fun, the winning's fun, but it's really about the relationships that you make with everybody. Um, it's gonna extend past your time at Nashua High. It's gonna go all the way through the rest of your life. Um, yeah, I still have, I still talk to people that were on the team. We still talk, we still reminisce about the, the fun times we had playing, you know, running, Running cross country when I didn't actually participate and just went out for them to the woods and 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 and, and was a jerk. Um, yeah, it, it's really about the relationships that you make and you know build those friendships, build those those strong relationships because they're gonna they're gonna be there once the sports are all over. Ladies and gentlemen, 2023 Nashua Athletics Hall of Fame inductee Matt Valuk. It's heavy. Yeah. All right. It's like throwing that shot put, Matty. Looking back, uh, myself, Coach Cobbs, Coach Howard, who's here today, we would always get together before meets and we'd kind of score the meets and see. You can always kind of look and project where you're going to finish. And there was, I remember one meet in particular where Coach Howard and Coach Cobbs are, are looking at each other saying, ah, we're going to come up a couple of points short here. What should we do? And Coach Howard just says, yeah, we'll just put Matt in that event. We're good. We're up five. All right. So 
but truly, uh, uh, Matt was, was a tremendous track and field athlete. And that picture, imagine that coming at you down the track. It, it, it truly was a, a, a beautiful thing. Our next inductee is a class of 2009 Nashua High School South student athlete, Mike Grilakis. <laughs> Mike was a three-sport athlete playing football, wrestling, and lacrosse. And he's described as an extremely humble and unassuming young man by one of his wrestling league directors. And I can assure you on the field and on the mat, he was as fierce as they come. In the week leading up to the Nashua North versus Nashua South football game, while meeting with my offensive coaching staff to go over the game plan, I wanted to know what our strategy would be. And uh, our offensive coordinator at the time, Dante Lorendi, came up and he said, it's quite simple, coach. He said, if, uh, if Grilak is on the left, we're going to run right. <laughs> and he said, if he's on the right, we're going to run left. And of course, me being me as well, what happens if he lines up in the middle? And Coach Lorendi said, send out the punt team and hope for the best. <laughs> Mike was a first team all state selection on Nashua South's 2008 state title football team, but it was the wrestling mat where he really showed his dominance. He was a division one state champion his junior year at 189 pounds, uh, the first from South to do so since 2004. The dominance continued his senior year as he bumped up to 215 pound weight class, once again winning the state title, but this time becoming the New England champion, the fifth in Nashua history and the first and only one at Nashua South. He went on to wrestle at the NHSCA Senior Nationals, finishing eighth in the country and winning the Craig Werner Award for the most wins by pin. He became the first All-American since the Roulette brothers who were I think in attendance here the, this afternoon in 1978, Mike was listed in the top five in Varsity Magazine's Team One Best Athletes list. He garnered first team Nashua Telegraph All-Star honors, and he was named the Telegraph Student Athlete of the Year his senior year. He was awarded a full wrestling scholarship to the University of Missouri. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet Mike Grilakis. Coaching Mike for the three years he was with me and just watching him, and four years in football, three years in wrestling. Um, he was a fantastic athlete with us. Um, so it means a lot. It means a lot for the hard work that he put in, a lot, a lot for the hard work that his teammates put in. And, um, you know, happy to be here to speak in his on his behalf. Uh, it says a lot about Mike, actually. I uh, remember when he was um, – coming up through the middle schools, hearing a lot about him coming. He'd been a middle school New England champion. And I was nervous because I was, you know, he was going to be a freshman, my second year coaching here. And um, in my head a little bit, I was thinking here, I'm going to have this kid come up who's going to have a pretty big head, pretty big ego. Um, you know, I was thinking, how am I going to, you know, work with that? And Mike is anything but that. He's uh, just a quiet, gentle guy who was a phenomenal wrestler. So he came into the room and just... His presence was known for his actions. Um, instead of just being like loud about how good he was, he just was that good. We had a young team. We were just coming out of the split. Uh, so the wrestling program, that first year of split, it was tough. We did. We only had one returning senior from the squad the year before and just trying to find our legs. And Mike came in as a freshman showing great leadership, but just by how hard he worked and how important it was for him to just be a good teammate. I'm here talking in his stead because Mike would never be the one to pat himself on the back or, you know, be the one who was uh, leading the parade, but definitely be a huge supporter for the team. Obviously, you know, winning the first D1 championship, uh, you know, individual championship for our, for South as a new school, uh, that was fantastic. That was in his sophomore year. Uh, so that was the, the first D1 champion that I've been able to coach. So that was really exciting. I beat one of... Uh, this is one of the ride out kids from Londonderry who was a fantastic wrestler and you know Mike caught him by surprise and that was a great win um obviously um you know him going to New England's being becoming a New England state champ or New England champion sorry his senior year being an all-american his senior year um so those like you know achievement accolades were amazing but honestly like what I remember Mike 
foremost, like I was saying before, was just being that you know quiet leader who just did by uh, by led by example. Actually, one of my most memorable experiences a football experience. Mike was also a great defensive end for us. He uh, started on that state championship team we had uh, in 2000 and. Eight, I believe. Um, he uh, was an All-State football player that year. Um, but I remember during that season, we'd had a pretty tough game against West up in Manchester. And uh, right before the end of the first half, um, we were on defense. Game was close. Mike went in, had like a strip sack or ended up with the football somehow, runs all the way down the end of the field, scores a touchdown. We we're going crazy, but there was a penalty on the play. And uh, it was sort of like, Kind of a not not a call that I would have made if I was a ref. What <laughs> didn't go for us, but I just remember Mike in the aftermath. I mean, most kids would be out of their mind, upset, and you know, Mike just right went back to the next play. Like he just was always kind of that calm, cool kid who just moved on to the next thing, competed at a high level the next time. Never took away from how hard he worked. Another thing I remember about Mike is just his fluidity as a wrestler was amazing. It was something that you know that's pretty generational. Uh, I remember him wrestling a Concord kid. Uh, this was his junior year. We were at Lowell Invitationals, which is a really tough tournament, um, sort of over the holiday break. And, uh, you know, all the best wrestlers in New England are at this event. It's like one of the first tough tests that a kid will kind of go through. And I remember him wrestling a Concord kid who was ranked pretty close to him in the state. And Mike was in control of the match and they were kind of in an awkward position. And I remember Mike just, I could see him thinking about what he was gonna do next. And he just made this sort of like, he stepped over the kid and like just got the kid into a bad position and pinned the kid right away. Uh, just by being able to understand the situation he was in, it was kind of unorthodox, but he knew how to manipulate it to win the match, just like by movement and this and against a very you know quality wrestler. And I remember the Conquer coach looking at me, just kind of like threw his hands up, like uh, like seriously. And I was like, ah, <laughs> yeah, yep, absolutely. You know, uh, it's not something that uh, I certainly didn't teach him the move. <laughs> it came out of uh, came out of just his ability to be just a fantastic clinician and the way that he wrestled, which was another really impressive thing about Mike. I just think the way that Mike carried himself, just the, um, like a lead by example kind of person, you know, and he didn't, it's okay to toot your horn. I, you know, and somebody like Mike had every right to do that. He was uh, just, you know, like I said, probably generational ability in wrestling. Um, but he never, you know, he was an unassuming guy and uh, he had a quiet confidence about him. Like there were times uh, where I could tell that he was like, like getting angry in Mike's way, particularly if he ever got a nosebleed. Like I always knew it was like go time when he got a nosebleed because he hated that and he would like destroy kids uh, if he ever got a nosebleed. But like he just, but he never like, it wasn't like a hard on his sleeve kind of guy. He was just, he was calm and cool and people really responded to that. Like I know it just helped. He was such a great teammate and a leader because of that. Uh, he was a captain for us his sophomore year and I was a little nervous about him being such a young captain. Um, and I think he ended up, by the end of the season, he was the only captain remaining because my other upperclassmen captains had gotten into this side of the next thing and just weren't showing the right leadership qualities. And Mike was just steady and no one questioned that. You know, he was an easy pick to be a captain his sophomore year, remained a captain for his next three years and just always led with that quiet confidence but also like, you know, lunch pail kind of kid too. Did did the hard work, you know, never uh, never tried to get out of anything, just put his nose to the grindstone and worked hard um, and with that ability. So I think those two things together made him the athlete he is and, you know, makes him the person he is today. You know, he's um, just, just a great person and um, great example for people to follow. I mean, I know Mike's family did a lot uh, for him. Um, his brother, George, um, spent time uh, helping me out and coaching the team, spending time with Mike. Um, I know it lent a lot to George to be there with Mike. Um, I know he was, you know, his brother George and Paul were both wrestlers here um, in Nashua. Um, so I know they probably tutored him a lot when he was younger by wrestling with him, uh, made him a great wrestler. His folks were always super supportive too. Um, so I know, you know, family's a big thing and uh, I know he'd love to thank his family. Um, 
I'm sure his teammates, he would love to thank them too. Um, you know, that we, I had a good wrestling room uh, with Mike there. I love that team. You know, but I, I know that he, he was a team guy, and uh, I know his team loved watching him succeed, um, and he enjoyed watching them succeed a while, like, you know, doing that together. So I'm sure he would thank his teammates. Um, and I thank Mike for being able to, I was along for the ride kind of. Like I, um, I knew I was, the best way I could coach Mike was just make him work hard to have the, you know, the best uh, motor he could have to like outlast any other kid. But technique-wise, like he got that from his brother's year before I got there. So I thank him for, you know, having me along for the ride. It was fan it was a lot of fun coaching him in football, but you know, in wrestling, it was fantastic just to be able to be in his corner, uh, watch him succeed. So um, I thank him for that. Ladies and gentlemen, 2023 Nashville Athletics Hall of Fame inductee Mike Brolakis. I remember reading about some of those uh, those meets and those matches against those Londonderry kids and those Concord kids, and, and they were very good, but Mike was just just f a phenomenal wrestler. And going back to the, the football stuff, um, as, a, as a coach, you try to take away the, 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 main, uh, the main player on the other team, and at that point in time, offensively, it was a, a young man by the name of David Zacco, and, and uh, my defensive coordinator at the time said, well, we, we've got good news and bad news. I said, well, what's that? He says, well, a game against South, we got a pretty good plan to stop David Zacco. I said, okay, what's the bad news? He said, well, they're probably going to give the ball to Mike Rolakis. And so we, it was, it was a, a, a fight uphill all the way. And Mike, congratulations. Tremendous, tremendous. <laughs> uh, when you walk into the gym, uh, the Belanger Gym in Ashua South, one of the first things that catches your eye is the large purple banner proclaiming the 1987 Nashua High Purple Panthers lady basketball team as the number one team in the nation. Not the state, not New England, not the, the East, right? All of the country, the entire country, the number one team. The 1987 Nashua High School girls basketball team had a historic run that has yet to be rivaled to this day. Nashua had one of the top programs in the nation throughout the late 1980s, winning 108 games in a row and finding a home in the national rankings for five consecutive years. The 1987 crew finished the season ranked number one in the nation by USA Today with a 24-win, zero-loss record while averaging 89 points per game and giving up just 31. Leading scorer Celeste Lavoie was a parade All-American who played at Stanford and finished at Duke. Hall of Fame coach John Fagula won 11 state titles at Nashua and had a record of 432 wins versus 72 losses. The 1987 team had no shortage of superstar players. Along with the, uh, Lavoie, Stephanie Bird went to BC. Missy Ayotte went to Pepperdine. Joy Berry went to Assumption. Becky Shrigley went to Iowa. And Michelle Buff went, LaBeouf went to WPI. All went on to play college basketball. If it were not enough for opposing teams to have to defend all of those players, on any given night, Lori Largi, Michelle Grenier, CJ Stewart, and Maurice Veyu could step up and take over a game. While Coach Fagula could be an intimidating presence on the court, Coach Sarah Rolfe, his longtime assistant and former player, was always someone the players could count on to help boost their confidence. Coach Rolfe played an integral role in helping the young lady Panthers evolve from playing at the middle school level to the highest level of high school basketball in the state. The impact of the 1987 season goes beyond the court. It's fair to say that the 1987 Nashua girls basketball team put the city of Nashua on the map on a national level. Let's take a look at the national championship winning team from 1987. Being number one in the United States, I, 
it's amazing. I mean, back in the day when we were playing, we were just playing basketball. Like we didn't really realize the impact that we had on the community. But then afterwards, we started to receive letters from people. And I have a few letters I'm actually going to bring to the Hall of Fame where um, it was it was fun going through them. I think that at that time, we were really just kids in so many ways. And all of this was kind of happening outside of the fact that we were playing basketball and the face of women's basketball, who knew would change at that place in time. As I've gotten older, I, le- I think less about the basketball and more about just the relationships and the fun that we had, like just the memories. I was trying to remember all like those core <laughs> memories you have of like singing on the bus. Michelle or <laughs> Celeste would always bring the little boom box. Yeah. And it was like, she loved to play Chicago on the bus and she would <laughs> sing at the top of her lungs. And like, there's so many memories and that's what sticks out to me less about being number one, but more about just um, being so close. I think there was a lot of pride. I think we yeah. carried ourselves with pride because we yeah. know we worked so hard and Fugula, you know, coach Fagula just wanted what was best for us. And I think, um, so there was a lot of pride when we were named number one, at least from my, my standpoint. And off the court though, we had fun. I mean, the bus rides, we would be singing. We'd go to places and hotels when we travel and Becky be playing the piano and Celeste would be playing the piano and we'd all be around <laughs> her singing songs. And I mean, like we, we had a, a strong bond, which was mm-hmm. a lot of fun. We genuinely they did. They did. They yeah. liked each other, you know? So it was like, it was just like Becky said, and it was simple. Like mm-hmm. it's, we had three plays, right? I mean, I don't, I don't think we had, we, had, we had three plays. Like, and you know, again, both my kids played sports, and um, and I'm like, I, I think I can still remember the three plays we had because that's all we had. We had yeah. a couple if they played zone defense, and one if there was man to man, and we had variations, of course, of it. But we would play off each other's strengths and who was having a a stronger day versus not. And, um, but I do think like we, we genuinely liked one another and respected coach Fugula and coach Rolf and, you know, the folks who were guiding us and teaching us. And I think that's, that's, that was, that was it. It was simple, but. I found. Yeah. yeah. There was so much discipline at the same time. Like there was so much, like we just had an undertone of discipline of just boxing out every time and doing the basics really, really well. And it's so funny because my son plays basketball at the high school level and I'm like, box out. <laughs> it's the, the basic stuff is just not reiterated enough these days. And I felt like we did that really well to get to your point. Yeah. It was simple. Yeah. But yeah. All of our practices were just, that's all we did was practice. That's all we did. Yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. And I, yeah, when you know I, went what? To college, and I often think about like, if I wrote a book, it would be like, and, and over my time, over my, you know, careers or whatever, I'm, I'm known as the person who is simple and does the basics like really well and achieves like phenomenal results with my teams through, through that. Like it just is just, and I think I got that as Joy said, like that discipline of just, okay, you do the basics really well and beautiful things can happen. Yeah. That's, that's, it's so true. I mean, you used to do the simplest drills, fundamentals, every single practice. And to give you girls kudos, you didn't complain and you took pride in, in doing your drills. And when you do your slides, you were mad at yourself. If you were, you didn't have as many as you normally have, or when you did your mic and drill, you didn't complain. You didn't complain and you did what was asked of you. And that was huge. And that doesn't always happen now. You know, yeah. I've been doing this for a long time and and it's very different. Yeah. So I definitely have to give you guys kudos in the fact that you all got along. No one person was more important than another person. And you were you were willing to do the little things to be successful. There are many influential people in my life, but there are three people who had the greatest impact on my success in basketball and earning a Division I college basketball scholarship. Those three people are Andrew Dutch DeShanes, Coach Bill Vermet, and Coach John Fagula. I'll discuss briefly how each of them impacted my life. Dutch DeShanes with our, our athletic director at Nashua Catholic Junior High. I started playing organized basketball for the first time in seventh grade. I did not know the positions or rules of the game and I was uncoordinated. I wanted to quit halfway through my season and I was able, as I was being made fun of my, my inadequacies. Mr. DeShanes had the discernment to identify what was going on and to recognize my potential when I did not believe 
that I had any talent for basketball. He asked me to stay on the team when I told him I wanted to quit. He told me that if I stayed on the team, he would not allow the pranks on me to continue and that he would cheer me on and be my biggest fan. I trusted him and he fulfilled his promise. I heard him cheering for me and he did not allow anyone to pick on me anymore. At the end of my season, I was determined to practice, to strive, to become a good player. I wanted to prove to everyone that they were wrong and I wanted to develop the talent that Dutch Deshaines identified in me. I brought this determination to Mount St. Mary's High School where Coach Bill Vermette gave me the opportunity to play varsity girls basketball as a high school freshman. My understanding of the game grew under his great coaching and through his belief in my ability to play at that level. He patiently and diligently developed our team and he helped me to develop my basketball skills. He was very patient and knowledgeable. In particular, he instilled in me a discipline for the game and a solid work ethic. Finally, Coach John Fagula was instrumental in developing me as an effective team player and co-captain of the, our national championship team as an individual player as a, to earn a Division I college basketball scholarship. He sacrificed so much of his own personal time to coach AAU summer basketball teams that my teammates and I played on to compete nationally. He took us to the Blue Star and Kathy Rush competitive summer basketball camps, as well as serving as a conduit between us and the college coaches who were recruiting us for scholarships to play college basketball. He truly was a basketball mastermind who had offers to coach college basketball. However, he chose to follow his calling to teach junior high school students and develop the talent of young athletes and teams in high school. I'm thankful that he made that decision. I'm truly indebted to these three people in particular for shaping my character, my basketball career, and guiding me to achieve my academic and athletic goals. Well, obviously my family, um, growing up, they supported me through my playing career. And then once I continued coaching, um, I coached for another like I think it was 35 years and they would always come and support me at my games. So they, they were very important, but also coach Pagula. Um, I played for him the first year he started coaching girls. I don't know if you know that. And um, so I played for him in my sophomore year and all through high school. And um, it was an adjustment period for the girls, obviously. And for him, um, it's very different to yell out, yell at girls than it is to be yelling at boys. So there was a big, big adjustment that we all had to go through. Um, so then I, you know, I graduated, I went to college. And then when I came back, I was um, lucky enough to spend seven years. I think it was with him along his side, coaching and learning. And once I moved on and I continued to coach, I can't tell you how many times I would hear his words coming out of my mouth. It was, it was, we'd be saying the same exact words verbatim. So I really do appreciate what he did for me as a player and as a coach. For current athletes, and I would say keep the balance, remember balance, um, that there's more to life than just the sport itself and to treasure what your coaches say. Um, they do work extra all the time uh, behind the scenes to better you as a human being and as an athlete. So to really soak the time in and enjoy it as, as well as wanting to always be better, try to always be better. Let defeat be a driving force in setting goals for yourself and your team, then work hard to achieve the goals. Finally, experience and savor the moment. It is important to set goals to achieve, but enjoy the progress towards those goals by living in the present. Enjoy the day-to-day -day fun of friendships, traveling, and cultural experiences you are afforded by being a member of a team and taking part in competition. The memories will be with you for a lifetime. And then for coaches, I think for me, you know, watching the boys have different coaches, I feel like right now it's like you're so lucky if you get a good coach who's a good person and has sees your, sees your son or daughter as a, a whole person, not just a person who's going to put points on the board. Um it's surprising to me that not all coaches have that see, ch see children and young adults through that lens, but I, I've, I've had that experience. And so I would say for coaches, you know, you're really shaping this person. And even if they're not your star player, um, yeah. treat them with that respect character. and remember, yeah. remember that you are, yeah. you, are a, you are a person that they look up to, you know, ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome our last inductees of the night of the afternoon, the 1987 
Nashua High girls basketball team. Head coach John Fagula, represented by his sister Karen Wickman. Assistant coach Sarah Rawl. Players Melissa Ayotte, Celeste Lavoie Blankenship, Michelle Grenier Coombs, Joy Berry Donovan, Stephanie Bird Kane, Becky Shrigley Nagy, Michelle LaBeouf Soleil, and Marie Swerbel. The 1987 number one ranked team in the country. <laughs> Women's basketball royalty. I like That's it. That's what my brother would say today. <laughs> What a memorable and inspirational afternoon this has been. Catching up with folks that I haven't seen in years. Hearing motivational stories from each of the inductees and reminiscing about the years gone by. Today gives us a reason to recognize and celebrate the accomplishments of extraordinary people. Extraordinary people who took great pride in their teams, their schools, and their city. These are the gatekeepers of excellence. It has been an honor and a privilege to emcee this event here this afternoon. And in closing, I would like to once again, for the final time, like to call up the lady who made this all possible, the co-head chair for the Nashua Athletics Hall of Fame, Lisa Jingris, to close this year's ceremony. Lisa. I know it's been a long afternoon, so I promise I'll be a little briefer than earlier, but there are a lot of people we need to thank. This has been an unbelievable afternoon. Some incredible stories on the video, so you are all aware. I will send the video out to all of the inductees so that you can share that with your friends and family. Um, how about another round of applause for our class of 2023? I would like to thank Jason Roby, our Master of Ceremonies. Incredible job today. To our photographers, Nancy and Karen, who have been capturing this afternoon. We will have all of those digital pictures and I will figure it out how to share it with 260 of you. This day would not have been possible without our sponsors, so I need to give a shout out to them even though they're not all present today. 98.5 The Sports Hub, Adrenaline Fundraising, Alpha Graphics, Beth and Brad Crake, The Club National, The Lions Club of Nashua, The Nixon Company, and of course Performance Rehab. So thank you to our sponsors. today, we absolutely need to thank Mr. Jeff Leone and the students of the National Technology Center video productions classes for filming, editing, and compiling the inductee videos today, as well as the entire virtual induction from 2020. Another thank you goes out. You probably have noticed all these gentlemen with the cameras all over the place today. National ETV has been recording and capturing today's event for replay later on Nashua's Education Channel, Channel 99. I want to thank all of these gentlemen for giving up their Sunday afternoon and thank Pete Johnson for always supporting Nashua, the Nashua community and especially the students and coaches of the Nashua Athletic Program. This has been a long day coming for many of us and I can't believe it's about to conclude. For the class of 2020, it has been three years that you've been waiting to be at an in-person induction to be honored. Though we inducted you in a virtual manner, we are happy that so many of you were here today and experienced some of the recognition that you so deserve. For the members of my team and the committee, those of you of you over here, it's been five years for us. Five years since we first talked about doing this, it's been five years of hard work, dedication, challenges, and successes. But we did. And for everybody else in this room, it's been 22 and a half years. 
that we have been waiting since November of 2000 when the last in-person induction took place. But for all of us here today, all 260 of our closest friends, I'm proud to say as the chair of the National Athletics Hall of Fame Committee, the Hall of Fame is back and it's not going anywhere this time. There are 128 members of the National Athletics Hall of Fame, but we're already making plans for the next time. Nominations will open on April 1st of 2024 for the class of 2025 to be inducted in May of 2025. Please visit the Hall of Fame page at either nationalnorthathletics.com or nashvasouthathletics.com for more information. At this time, our induction is concluded. On behalf of the committee, I want to thank you for attending today's ceremony and hope you have enjoyed your afternoon. Thank you, everyone. Safe travels.